Here we go again, talking about bystander intervention. I'm so happy that you're listening. Yeah, that you're right here today. Whoa, oh, you want some more? Whoa, oh, what are we waiting for? Another podcast episode. Yeah, we're talking about healing, all right. Hi, my beautiful friends. Welcome to the Danielle Shea podcast. My name is Danielle Shea, and I'm your host, and I'm a healing coach for sexual assault survivors and a lived experienced expert. That means that I'm a survivor too, and my mission is to ensure that all survivors know healing is possible. This platform, along with my coaching programs, are all designed to turn survivors into thrivers. I want you to live a joyful and fulfilled life. And if you're ready for some healing, let's dive into today's episode. You're welcome for that beautiful, beautiful singing. I just feel like we need a little bit of happiness because I feel like I've been like extra serious lately. And the last podcast episode I recorded was just like very intense. And we talk about very intense things on the show. We are talking about sexual trauma and sexual violence. And today we're talking about why bystander intervention is key to preventing sexual violence. And they're very important topics and they're very important episodes that need to happen. These conversations need to happen. And sometimes I think that when we're in our healing or when we're helping other people with their healing, we get so lost in the sauce that we forget that life is also for fun and for joy and that we can talk about very serious things in an accessible and digestible way that makes us want to then participate in acting against these topics that we're talking about. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that little song. And today we're going to talk about bystander intervention because sexual violence affects millions of people worldwide and it continues to be a pervasive problem in many communities, but all communities. And despite the numerous efforts to address this issue, it still remains a major concern. But there's hope, right? There is hope in everything. And one thing that I want to just instill in all of my clients and in all the people that I interact with is that there is always hope. There's always hope for a better future. There's always hope for healing. And one of those causes for hope is bystander intervention It's a solution that has shown promise in preventing sexual violence. As active bystanders, we can intervene and prevent sexual violence from happening. And ultimately, that allows us to create safer communities. So today, we're going to explore the concept of bystander intervention. We're going to understand the warning signs of sexual violence, learn how to take action, and discover ways that we can create safer communities. By understanding this, And how to become active bystanders, we can make a difference. We can be the change. And we can contribute to a world where sexual violence no longer exists because that is the goal. I'm a big dreamer. Go big or go home. If we're going to do something, let's freaking do it. So let's first create some context and some understanding. And I think that to better understand how we can be an active bystander, we first have to know the warning signs of sexual violence. Oftentimes, these signs are not easy to identify, and that's why being an educated bystander is so crucial. Some signs that may include a victim feeling uncomfortable or safe is someone touching or groping another person without their consent, or someone repeatedly pressuring another person to engage in sexual activities. And in those cases, there might not be any visible signs And that definitely makes it challenging to intervene. However, if you have this sense that something is off or you feel that someone is in danger, it's always better to act and intervene rather than waiting for something to happen. And we're going to explore how you can take action and create safer communities in a little bit. So a lot of these warning signs, they, they come with being aware of your surroundings Do you feel uncomfortable or safe? Do you sense a shift in someone's behavior or in someone's facial expressions? 
Are you connected to the overall kind of feeling of the group or in the environment that you're in? And recognizing these subtle changes or big changes, like seeing someone being physically hurt or noticing bruises or maybe lack of sleep and a lack and change of their behavior can be things and signs of that something just isn't quite right. Now, knowing these things is great, but knowing something and not doing anything about it is not helpful. So an active bystander, you have the power to step in and make a difference. So let's explore how we can take some action and help prevent sexual violence from happening in the first place. Taking action can be as simple as making your presence known. In some situations, simply interrupting what's happening with a distraction or a distraction tactic can be enough to de-escalate the situation. You can also directly intervene by speaking up and letting the person know that their behavior is unacceptable. And if you feel uncomfortable or unsafe doing so, then you can enlist the help of others nearby, which can be a powerful way to create a united front and show that that behavior will not be tolerated. And I'm not saying go out there and stop something right now, but I am saying that you can start to kind of build your confidence and your resilience in these situations when things aren't, you know, blown up and escalated. You can say something when someone calls someone a derogatory name, when someone says an inappropriate joke. You can question that behavior, say something like, remind me why that's funny. Or simply say, I'm uncomfortable with this conversation. Can you take that outside? There are many ways that you can say something in a situation prior to it getting out of hand. And that is often the best time to do something when you feel that feeling of something being off rather than waiting again for something to happen. Another way that you can take action is by reporting incidents of sexual violence or harassment. This can involve speaking with a trusted authority figure, such as a teacher, supervisor, law enforcement officer, HR, and PC representative. It can also mean talking to someone who you know is like the squeaky wheel in your company. For example, I am that person. Yes, I have my own business now, but once upon a time, I was also a full-time employee, and I'm the squeaky wheel. If I see something, I'm going to say something. That is for sure. And people know that about me. And so oftentimes I was the person that they would come to like, hey, this happened and I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to speak up. Can you say something in my behalf? And I would. I would go to HR or I would talk to people and I would explain that they were making people feel uncomfortable and have that conversation with someone. Now, it doesn't always have as much weight because. Oftentimes, the people that are coming to me, they want to be kept anonymous, but at least that conversation is happening and and you, you can do something about it. You can be that safe space for people to come to and to be the voice for those people. Taking action also can mean supporting and believing someone who comes forward with an allegation of sexual violence. If someone says, hey, this happened to me, I believe you. First words out of your mouth. Thank you for being so brave for speaking up. And thank you for being so vulnerable with me. Because your vulnerability is a gift and I'm so happy that you feel safe enough to have this conversation with me. Taking action can mean being that person who creates that safe space by allowing people to feel safe enough to come to you and have those conversations. And that And all the other steps that we just mentioned helps create a culture where sexual violence is not tolerated and where survivors are supported. And in order for more people to take action and for people to come to you and feel safe enough to come to you, we need to start with creating safe communities and safe spaces that you are in. I like to say that my biggest flex is that I'm safe. You can trust me with your secrets. I'm not going to tell anyone unless you're harming yourself or you're in danger, and in which case I would be doing you a disservice if I did not speak up on your behalf. 
And that, again, is also creating a safe space and taking action. And I'm so proud of being that person who's a, who can create safe communities. And then the next thing that we can do is, again, creating safe space in communities, because this is not just individual action, but collective efforts that really make a difference. Because by working together, we can create communities that are safe for everyone. And one way to start is by fostering an environment where open communication is encouraged, where survivors are believed and supported. Safe communities are built on a foundation of mutual respect and accountability. Everyone has a role to play in promoting these values and in holding others accountable for their actions. And this can involve challenging problematic behaviors or attitudes like we talked about before. It could be standing up against gender stereotypes and supporting those who may be vulnerable to exploitation or abuse. Another key aspect of creating communities that are safe is promoting education and awareness around issues of sexual violence and harassment. This can include providing training on consent, healthy relationships, and bystander intervention, which is what we're talking about today, as well as educating individuals on the impact of sexual violence on survivors and society as a whole. And that is one key purpose of this podcast, educating survivors on how they can continue to heal and transition from survivor to thriver, and then also continuing to give advocates, people who are working with survivors and thrivers, to support them better and to support their communities better. By working together to create these safe communities, we can prevent sexual violence and create a world where everyone is treated with respect and dignity. As active bystanders, it's our responsibility to lead the way and set an example for others. So quick recap for this quick episode. Bystander intervention is not only a crucial tool, but a responsibility that we all share in preventing sexual violence. Understanding some of the warning signs that we talked about, how to take action, and create safe communities for everyone as individuals, know that we hold the power to make a difference. Let us challenge ourselves to become these active bystanders and contribute to a world where sexual violence no longer exists. Remember, one small act of intervention can have a huge impact. So let's make it our mission to protect each other and put an end to sexual violence once and for all. Wow, that was incredible. Did you get as much out of listening to that as I did in creating it? I hope you did. I hope you found it helpful and powerful, and I hope that it allowed you to take action and choose yourself today. If you found this to be helpful, please share this with someone who needs to hear this message as well, because we don't need to heal alone. Thank you so much for choosing yourself today and for listening. I'll see you next time.